going on, Button Mashers? I'm Mr. Gamer. And I'm Kitty Duvall. And welcome to SBR Reports, episode 65. And you thought that was a good idea? But let's actually get into, first, let's get into some actual good ideas. Well, okay, and by good ideas, I mean, we are go- we have a little bit more information about the Nintendo 64 Classic Mini. That is Corporate good ideas. Okay, so that's a bit of a mouthful, the Nintendo 64 Classic Mini. Can we just call it like the 64 Mini? Can we just do that for like, until the thing comes out? Because that's, that's just too much to say at once. Ugh. Okay, anyway, but we the have... 64 CM. <laughs> Okay, see, that sounds way too much like 64. You, you know exactly what I'm trying to say. So let's let, let's stick to 64. Let's just stick to 64 mini and 64 mini. Boom. See, there we go. In 64 mini. That that sounds like that sounds significantly more uh parental safe. But anyway, so we have been waiting for some definitive proof on what we'll be getting with the uh, Nintendo 64 Classic Mini for just about a year now. And based off of a leak from Twitter user Carl Brennan, we have what the ports will actually look like on the Nintendo 64. And oddly enough, they seem to be the same ones from the NES Classic Mini and SNES Classic Mini. Um... But one other thing to point out, and please remember, you can look at all of the articles that I ever talk about on my website. Um, With the pictures, it actually seems as if they were taken from behind a screen or like actually like from a screen. But it's the best that we got so far. So we definitely know that it's coming. Uh, We have no idea when. It also shows the expansion port, which... Uh, for those for those of you who have never owned a Nintendo 64, the Nintendo 64 had an expansion pack port where you would be able to give your console more RAM. It was required for a few games. I believe it was, I know it was Donkey Kong 64 and either Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time. I believe so. I mean, I only played Ocarina of Time and Mario, so... I mean, those were all still good games, but so that's it. That's a, unfortunately, that's all the information that we have with the uh, N64 mini. We have no idea prices or anything like that, though. I will say I am. I'm actually excited. I won't be purchasing it, but I am excited <laughs> to see what I'm not. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt. I'm not going even going to attempt. I still own an N64, so I don't need this. I mean, I don't because it got caught in a flood back in the day. I mean, not to like mention there isn't an Animal Crossing game on it. There isn't. So you, so there's no reason for you to even... I just need a GameCube, if that was the case. <laughs> right. So, so I'm going to wait for the Switch. <laughs> you, 2019, it'll definitely be there for you. Next up, let's talk about... Okay, let's just get into the really stupid part of this podcast. What's this 90% of this podcast, I think, today? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just about. So, Fallout 76 stress text leaker is suspended from Xbox and Twitter. <laughs> so, this, uh, the, the, <clears throat> excuse me. So, there was a stress test done for the fallout 76 game which should be coming out and there was also a non-disclosure agreement for those that were partaking in the stress test which bans photos video and audio recordings people who are participating in the fallout 76 stress test you're not even supposed to be talking about it talking about the game you can't post it on your account you can't let other people play essentially they signed an nda and and People, more specifically companies, big companies like Microsoft and Bethesda, you know, they take those things really, really seriously. Like, (laughs) seriously, seriously. Like, you can be sued seriously. Like, they will take everything you have plus what your grandchildren will have seriously. NDAs are no joke. Yeah, not, they, they just aren't. So, this particular... Uh, this particular user was not only suspended from Twitter, but they also had their Xbox Live, uh, Xbox Live account banned. They are unable to access the, um, they are unable to access the beta of the game until the 25th of October. Though it seems as if they got hit from both ends, both from Microsoft and Bethesda. Bethesda has technically given this person permission to play the game from late October. But because you need an Xbox Live Gold subscription to play it, this person is S-O-L. And uh, 
And this oh um by the way suspended up until January 2019. You're done goofed. Like and that's your whole Xbox Live account though. So unless you make a brand new account for these next few months, that you just can't. You you can play the games, but you can't play the games online. It's like it just goes to show you people when you're when you're when you're messing with big companies and you're signing NDA, you're you're not supposed to disclose like it. it really seems as if this should be self explanatory. And see, the thing. the thing is, is that like as much as I we see leaks all the time, it's very rare that we see people get something like this. And this is why, if you're going to do something, either cover your tracks, and or don't sign the paperwork. This don't do it. You know what? Unfortunately, the people that we'll be talking about in our next piece definitely did not cover their tracks. They covered their tracks so terribly that they put bright neon outlines about where they were and what they were doing. Did they live a, did they leave a glitter path? They you know what? We're not even talking. We're, we're talking something beyond the art. The, the the herpes of arts and crafts we're talking about hey i'm going to cheat on arguably the most popular video game uh of this day and age but i'm gonna put the cheats on it on youtube bum 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 again y'all how mm, so how upset me <laughs> Epic Games filed a lawsuit against YouTube personality Brandon Lucas and his partner Colton Conter for using and selling cheats. Lucas, who has 1.7 million subscribers, allegedly, they have to say allegedly in these articles, allegedly violated the Digital Medium Copyright Act, breached contract, and engaged in quote-unquote tutorious interference by posting videos of his Fortnite cheating and selling the cheat tools through his website so you even had your oh gee oh oh boy oh boy oh boy so you're telling me not only you had the cheats you went to youtube you didn't really hide who you were or what you were doing and you were selling the cheats on your own website not even like that you found from somebody else no i found this on like pirate bay or something oh boy so they're not only going to have to pay let me make sure I'm getting this correct. So they want everything that the every piece of money that the cheaters have made. They want all the money that the cheaters have made from it on top of damages and court fees. What? Yes. Oh, sorry. So, no, I'm just looking at this and I'm trying to figure out, like, so you broke into the game, you cheated on the game, you posted all your cheat stuff on YouTube, and you know what? I would have been fine with all that because that's this normal tomfoolery in, these, in this day and age, but you took the extra step to sell your cheats yeah and it's, this isn't game shark right and <laughs> this is in the 90s and early 2000s man i do remember my game shark though one though one thing to note lucas the partner and all of this is claiming innocence saying that he didn't see his behavior as troublesome and that other youtube video producers were doing the same thing i am so man okay, that so, bus he okay, saw the bus okay, no 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 i'm, I'm i gotta <laughs> i am i'm so sick of this what aboutism thing it's like oh what i did wasn't bad because such and such were doing it too that does not negate the stupid crap that you did such and such might be doing it but your dumb ass is the one selling shit they I promise you, these companies, as irritated as they get when people hack their stuff, they get madder and will come for you if you're making a dime off their property. This yeah. is why oh, Nintendo yeah. is so hell-bent oh, yeah. on protecting their shit. And, 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 and I don't, I, I really don't understand. <laughs> Miss Duvall, I need, I need some clarification because it, it the, the argument that I didn't think that what I was doing was bad because other people were doing it. What what is what does that exactly mean? So are we not supposed to take so are we not supposed to punish you for your acts because people have done 
worse because just one thing that Mr. Duvall hit on it's like yes you wanted to do all these things and yes other people have done these things but you're the one that got caught also it, it's it's it, okay you know what just because i grew up in chicago and i know way too much about gang activity going to public school teaches you that apparently you know dare comes to your school and tells you all about it so Drug you don't abuse, join resistance it resistance education i cannot believe i still remember that so like it's like when you join a gang, you're going to get the crap beat out of you. And you're going to be the one that they toss to the ch- cops when they're trying to get away. Patsy. Pretty much. It's like, it's like, this is literally what you did, what these two kids did. I don't know how old they are. Well, you know, it really doesn't matter. I hope they, I, I hope they got the money. That's all I care about. I mean, are they realistically going to be getting whatever it is that. Uh, Epic Games is going to be suing them for no. I'm almost certain this is going to this is this is to make a statement like, hey, stop cheating in our game, and more importantly, not only stop cheating in our game, stop selling the cheats that make people that make that give other people the ability to cheat in our game. Like, I just stop it. It's like it's one thing when you're passing it along and you're not making money off of it, or you're asking for quote unquote donations, <laughs> but no, you sold it. <laughs> You sold it. You knew what you were doing. And, oh God, I can't. Y'all need to get smarter about this. All right. So let's just. But don't con- actually do it. Please. So let's go on to the next topic, which actually still has to do about money. An article written on CA, uh, cityam.com. Loot boxes, video games, and other ways the gaming industry wants you to spend more money. Oh, my God. I'm tired of loot boxes. I'm, I'm tired of talking about them but this is in, this is important so let's make sure that we at least hit on it now it? i mm, it is it, <laughs> we, we do have to talk about this and we have to talk about this just based off of the second sentence of the second paragraph of this article quote games are very expensive to make a big game with top tier graphics could have cost one, well over 100 million dollars to produce so games developers and publishers are very keen to make a bigger return on their investment. You know, if you didn't add the loot boxes and everything in the first place, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't cost $100 million. Also, is that number even right? That sounds like something they pulled out of their ass. Let's continue. But the upfront cost of games for consumers is already high, and there are hundreds of competing forms of entertainment. So the trick, notice they say trick, is to make gamers spend more without necessarily realizing it. Truth. The most common way to do this is to create extra content, such as new missions, weapons, and decorations called quote-unquote skins that are sold separately to the main game known as downloadable content DLC. Now, I would like to note that the I believe that the term DLC is not necessarily being used properly. But it's only because I am, I will, I will, I will admit I'm a bit of an elitist and this, this, this crap, unfortunately, just really pisses me off how, for example, I have to go back to the No Man's Sky, where No Man's Sky, when it, (laughs) when it first came out, it was terrible. It was absolutely horrendous and no one liked it. And then after that, they released the super ultra mega patch and then the game was decent. Yeah, see, the thing is, I'm fine with DLC if you're not selling me an unfinished game. And you know what? I'm so glad you said that. Because just, just as this author points out, the problem is that some players feel compelled to buy DLC if they want the full experience, especially if this extra content was actually created as part of the core game, then carved out to be sold separately. You mean like Final Fantasy 15, I think it was? I, okay, so there was more than Final Fantasy fifteen. I, I I thought there was that there was the huge battle in the city with the teleporting, and but then, then of course you had the different stories, story arcs. You got to see what Glady Daddy was doing. You got to see what the other people were doing. Yeah, that was the thing. Oh, uh, okay. I, you know what? I'm at, I actually appreciate how this author, how how the author of this article covered this thank you luke graham because one of the things that i am finding more often in video games for example um there was a video game that recently came across my eyes uh modern 
Plants vs. Zombies 2 Garden War... Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Now, this game was not a $60 video game. It shouldn't be. But it did have what, I, what I'm going to call a pay-to-win sort of economy where you are able to use real money to buy in-game currency that then you buy stickers that have a chance to give you a rare item that makes your character more powerful. Does this sound familiar to you? My head hurts. Yes, it should because this, well, obviously, you know, it was made by EA and PopCap, but the idea is that you pay more money to get stronger. For example, Devil May Cry, you can use real money to purchase red orbs. I remember us talking about this. So, long story short, I don't think gaming companies are going to stop. And we can say this until we're blue in the face. Yep, I agree. But they're only going to listen once people stop spending their money. You know know what, Ms. Duvall? I'm going to say something that I hope I do not regret, but I am not afraid to say it on record. I believe there needs to be more regulation with how video games are made. I I do. And I say that because you and I saying something on this podcast, we, even though we have all these people listening, I am not sure that that is necessarily going to change the developers to do anything. So only I get what you're saying. I don't think I agree because the government also is into big money. Yes. So I don't think anything would really change. They'll add pretty words, but nothing would really change. Hence, we go back to what I said previously and what you always say. I'm going to like start slapping people's wallets out of their hands when they buy un- when they're about to buy unfinished games. It's like, no, you don't do that. It, it would be nice, but I, I, I believe that, and, and here's my argument for the regulation. For example, Belgium, they are, they're, they're banning loot boxes, though, though EA with FIFA is, you know, trying to still go against that. The idea that they are trying to crack down on predatory gambling. And I will say that is definitely predatory. Okay. Well, I can get behind that. I can get behind regulating things that need to be regulated like gambling. Right. And I realize that they're not there is no way that the government is going to be able to step in and somehow qualify what DLC should be. And I would have and I would make no expectation for them to try to do that. You know what we do need though? Change in the subject. What do we need? A good We're- Ratchet and Clank game? Because that movie was terrible? Sorry. I was thinking about things that we needed. Do you, do you need a hug? I need a better Ratchet and Clank game because I'm looking at my PS4 here and then I just remembered that that terrible game was in my PS4 and there's no way to clean it from the in, from the inside out. But you were saying something about a video game. No. Or something that we needed. You know what we need? We need Rockstar to stop beating their employees. Even though they did come out and added some extra bonarchy. But... <laughs> bonarchy. Is, is, is that the not curse word we're going to be creating tonight? Bonarchy? Just, just... I honestly... Uh, for those who are probably not on Twitter, because this is where I found all this, mm-hmm. Rockstar has since got a, had a interview with Vulture and at some point bragged about employees working 100 hours a week. And I'm just going to put this out there now before we get into this. Mm-hmm. I understand people liking, people feeling like they're badass for when they can work under crunch time like cosplayers and so on and so forth mm-hmm. do you know how unhealthy that is like do you I'm know a- how unmanageable that is that is not a realistic way for you to try to get work it's like, it's unsustainable this is why people get sick all the time this is why you end up going to the hospital longer your boss is not going to pay you more you're not going to get more recognition just because you put an extra 50 hours into your work week. I hate to say it, but it's true, especially if you're salaried. Like, I re- I just straight refuse. Now, let's now let's do let, let's do Don't let's do it be to fair. Yourself. Let's be fair and let's let the um let, let we're going to let Hauser the person who originally made the comment, we're going to make we're going to make sure that he is completely understood, though we definitely don't agree and we'll be ripping him to shreds later. So, full quote. 
There seems to be some confusion arising from my interview with Harold Goldberg. The point I was trying to make in the article was related to how the narrative and dialogue in the game was crafted, which was mostly after what we talked about, not the different processes of the wider team. I'm going to cut ahead to the arguably the most uh, the the biggest piece of that interview that is then now spreading across the internet. More importantly, we obviously don't expect anyone else to work this way. Across the whole company, we have some senior people who work very hard purely because they're passionate about a project or their particular work, and we believe that passion shows in the games we release. But that additional effort is a choice, and we don't ask or expect anyone to work anything like this. Lots of other senior people work in an entirely different way and are just as productive. I'm just not one of them. No one, senior or junior, is ever forced to work hard. Mm. I believe we go to great lengths to run a business that cares about its people and to make a company a great place for them to work. Now, there obviously is going to be a, a few rebuttals about that. And there were several former Rockstar employees that wanted to share exactly what that exactly looks like. A Twitter user at some bad ideas spoke out. I've worked in the film and games industries. Speaking only for myself, there have been times where I worked 100 hours in a week happily and proudly. Rockstar, I quit only after a few months. Another person, another Twitter user, Christ underscore chins, Christ chins, sure. Uh, probably 12 to 14 hour days, six days a week. Sometimes we were given the choice of which weekend we wanted to day off. Probably last a four year as the crunch hours go on way past release to cater for post releases slash DLC, etc. Now, I am uh, I'm, I'm exactly a little bit concerned about a why that would be something that you wanted to brag about. Why is it that you would want to brag about the fact that, oh yeah, look at us. We have staff, because remember, it's a choice. Rockstar didn't make these senior members do this, but we have staff that have put in 100 hours, 100 hour a week, 100 hours a week. I, I can't, I can't imagine why you would even let them do that. Like, like, if I knew that someone was going out of their way and working, let's see, typically an hour a day, and they were putting, like, 12 to 14, I'm telling you to go home. Because guess what? Especially if it's Monday to Thursday, I need you, you know, somewhat lucid. You need to go home. You need to rest so that you can come in the next day and we can come back and work. I don't oh. need you working yourself to the bone just for you to come back not being able to get things done. That is not... How is that going to be beneficial for me or the company at all? You know what? I am trying to find it, but I have read a tweet early. I need to learn how to Twitter better sometimes. But... And you're the one who runs my social media, by the way. I don't touch your Twitter. I'm just saying. Anyway. <sighs> no, there was... Because I read it this morning, and it was about a woman who would make cake for her coworkers once a once a week mm -hmm. and they would call it cake day and it was like like you know it's just something for them all to do this 30 minutes worth of relaxing getting to know everybody in the company like everybody was invited to cake day mm -hmm. and then the higher ups caught wind of it and said you are causing lack of pr productivity. Makes sense because, you know, people are eating cake and they're not at their desks, you know, coding away at whatever it is that they're doing. Even though, like, you know, people would, like, you know, after they had that little extra 30 minutes, were a lot more productive that day because, you know, they had a little sugar break. <laughs> and they essentially she felt like she couldn't, like, stand up to them. Mm -hmm. To tell them this is something she wants to do for her co-workers because, you know, her job would be on the line. Yeah. And then everybody went back to being miserable. And it's just like, y'all, and it so happened to be Rockstar that she worked for. You know what? I guess this is, I, I it, it's, it's kind of going to suck to say. It may not make some people happy, but this is kind of why unions exist. I mean. Th this is, this is kind of, I, I would honestly say this is kind of why. They're not the best, but yes, this is why. 
Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have their own monarchy. They do. But seriously, guys, I I don't understand this culture of forcing forcing yourself to work a work so long hours consistently. Like I see in the cosplay community, I I almost got on you at some point. Mm, okay, and and I, I unfortunately <laughs> I do I do not even have anything to say in in that regard except when you when you want to get things done though I was my own I'm I am my own boss so I'm just doing it to myself but no but that's what I'm saying people do it to themselves as well as businesses doing it to their employees you cannot function properly if you are doing this to yourself you you will burnout is real and you will kill your passion. If you keep burning out, like these gaming companies need to understand people do this as a passion. And if you burn out their passion, you're going to get shit games, period. Like that gift, period. You, you said, you said crap games. And the only thing I thought of was mighty number nine. Precisely. Oh, I, I am pretty sure they worked very hard on that. They put in all the hours, but where did it go anyway <laughs> so there was something else that i did want to try to touch on and i was actually thinking about this as i was playing the world ends with you final remix i originally got the game because i am in love with the original one on the ds and i had the expectation that it would be a very similar experience and i can say that i was mistaken i did not remove my nostalgia glasses before I purchased that game. I'm not saying that the game is not worth its money. What I will say, though, is the game was not worth the hype that I had put with it. And this goes into nostalgia. For example, Mr. Vall, if they came out with... If, if instead of Animal Crossing for 2019, mm-hmm. they pushed it back. Aww. But instead they gave you New Leaf. On the Switch? Yes. I mean, I guess Animal Crossing is not that hard to switch up, though. Because, well, like... We're not talking... We're talking about a game that you played before that you really, really loved, by the way. I do. I love that game so much. I love it. Would you just... Boom. Gump. Just like, we... I'm sorry, we were pushed it back, but we're but we're gonna we're gonna give you this. I think it's safe to say that you would definitely purchase that game. I mean, I would either purchase it or give you puppy dog eyes until you got it for me. So what you're saying is that you would purchase it. Got it. <laughs> I tried. You did. But the yeah, fact of the matter is got. you would get that game based off of your experiences and how good the game previous iteration of the game was i think a better example would be city folk actually why city folk because city folk is a lot older because new leaf i already bought new leaf at least twice the first time when it first came out and then welcome amiibo okay so if we're going to use an example i would say city folk and i would buy the hell out of city folk okay and this is kind of the this is really hard as someone who's played a lot of video games Going back to my example of the world ends with you, um, for those of you who don't know, you are able to use it to use the Switch's touchscreen or you can use Joy-Cons, whether you have it in uh, tabletop mode or you have it docked. But I can definitely say that the game, the game's playability is diminished when you're using your Joy-Cons or trying to do it in tabletop mode because you will never get as fast as a response as you would if you were using your finger. Um, with the world ends with you, you are able to use your finger to either swipe across the main character or make special motions, uh, similar to Okami on the screen and particular things will happen based off of your equipment. It, I, I have to say it was actually better on the Nintendo DS. And I say that because just being able to hold the 3DS as it was, with a actual stylus, not my finger, but a stylus in my other hand, made it a whole lot easier to do particular things. Now, a few things have changed in the game. How you interact with your partners have changed, but I have to hold my Switch similar to a book, actually. And there's no real 
comfortable and safe way to do that or I have to have it face down on a table and I'm just swiping at it, which really isn't necessarily good for my neck or my back. But I'm not going to lie to you. When I first, when the game was talked about during the direct, I'm like, it's getting got. And then it came out at Best Buy, and I'm like, boom, let's go. You did jump out your chair. I did. And I was just like, yeah, let's go. And then I played it. Even the first five minutes, I was like, oh, man. I mean, I love the music. There's the characters. It's just like, and I tried, I I gave it a shot. I gave the Joy-Cons a shot. And I'm like, this is too slow. It, it, it is. I mean, especially when you're a tryhard like me, I'm going to try to max out everything I can and every swipe matters. But I definitely feel like, and, and unfortunately, this is going to be a criticism of Nintendo. Um, is that really unfortunately though? No, it isn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they bank hard. They bank real hard on your nostalgia. Oh yeah, that's that Nintendo is notorious it is. for that. It ooh. I mean, and it's like I knew it. But at that time I wasn't thinking about it. Because I had the glasses on and I had the game. And I was remembering all the fun experiences I had with the last iteration of this game. You know, I wouldn't even feel bad about it because even the biggest critics of Nintendo fall for it at times. It's, I mean, because they'll, they, they, <laughs> they, they know you. They are the, they are the Disney of video games. Yeah, because seriously, I mean, the reason people wanted to play Kingdom Hearts when it first came out as one, Square Enix and Disney. Mm-hmm. Two is Disney. Yeah. Because let's face it. When you first look at Kingdom Hearts, that looks dumb. It does. It like, looks silly. <laughs> like, why why, why is Sora feet so big? What does the power of light actually do? Why am I fighting with Donald and Goofy? Who Who is this heartless? Who is this stupid Kyrie chick and why do I care? Hey, now. We're not going to talk to you, Kyrie. Okay. I'm just saying the first things that popped inside my head <laughs> when I was looking at this game. But because... And see, the thing is, it also has Square Enix. So anybody that was a Final Fantasy fanatic, this game is got. Especially Final Fantasy VII. I'm, I'm going to keep my opinion about Final Fantasy VII to myself. Because, well, that's because you're a Final Fantasy IX fanboy. Right. I know. You know, the right game, the cool game. I'm eight, so it's okay. But the thing is, you see Cloud, people are very simple. They see something. No, I'm being serious. No, you're right. I remember I remember when, <laughs> when like, I forgot exactly what Hades Cup it was. Well, I don't know if it was just called the Sephiroth Cup, but there was a point where you fought Sephiroth. And it was such a big deal. Oh, my God, I was in grammar school and everyone wouldn't stop talking about it. And, like, and, and how many people do you think, purely based off of nostalgia, because it's been years since we've had another Kingdom Hearts game, how many people oh. do you think, and I'm not talking about will purchase, I'm talking about pre-ordered the game. So everybody who hasn't been burnt and hurt by the Kingdom Hearts franchise, essentially, because like, you know... I what was I'm, Dream Drop Distance? So I, I had to say it. What the what what the shrimp taco look, was Dream Drop Distance? I quit after two. I wasn't about to play all these side quest games because that's what it was. Side, side quest, quest game. <laughs> side quest chain of me- it's we like had you- chain of memory. No, we had chain of memories twice, and then we had final mix, and then we had two point five, and then we had two point eight. But people bought it because if they heard simple and clean. Simple it was and clean is the precisely way you're making me feel tonight. Yeah. 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 As soon as they hear simple and clean, it's getting got. Yeah. And and I and I'm and like <laughs> even as objective as I'm trying to be right now, I'm like, oh man, I still got my PS2. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. But we, we, we kind of got off topic with well going over to Sony, but when you when you definitely think about people who and I think this is a fair statement to say, 
who definitely uh use your nostalgia against your wallet, not you, your wallet. My wallet whimpers whenever I see Nintendo announce something that I've played a billion times already. I mean, (laughs) people are calling, and and I've even said it before too, people are calling the Nintendo Switch a a port machine because... It is. uh, With the exception of the large library of of indie titles available on the Mm eShop, which is nice, but... Hey, third-party developers, for those of you who are listening, give the Nintendo Switch a chance. I mean, come on. We got Doom on it. Come on. Doom is just this damn thing, isn't it? Yes. Oh yes, my it God. is. <laughs> but anyway, we... <laughs> I... I'm not necessarily having buyer's remorse with The World Ends With You, but I would say that No, I, that's reverse reserved for ukulele. Because that was another that was another bought that, oh, item based my, on nostalgia. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I think I purposefully tried to forget about that. But oh, yes. I'm never gonna let you forget. Thank you. The sock goes well I, on my eggs. Button mashers. I got the shirt. I I all of that. I I don't I don't quite remember how how deep I was with whatever backer gift they got. I don't know if my name is in the credits. It is. My name is in the credits of this game, and I wish it wasn't. But yes, that is a bit. That, wow, I think that example is even better than the world ends with you mm-hmm. because it was supposed to be the rare revival, and that was. Oh man, I don't. Is there something? Is is there something deeper than hot garbage? Because I, it, the game was so bad, I deleted it from my Steam. I deleted it from Steam. I didn't even want. It's still there as something that I own, but oh boy, that was, mm, that hurt. Uh, So before we just keep going and going and going and talking about more nostalgia burns, I think we can successfully say nostalgia is dangerous, button mashers. Please make sure that you use your nostalgia wisely. Keep, Keep your nostalgia wrapped up. Or, you know, have your hype, but then before you open up your wallet, or grab your mother's bank card or your grandma's. I don't know whose bank card you're grabbing. This is long. Before you, before you get the money to go buy the thing. Before you buy the thing, please reevaluate. Think if you're really going to need this on a system that is not was not designed for. Because that's the issue with the world ends with you. Yeah. And think really hard. Do you want to be one of the people to say, oh, I got this first if it turns out to be good? Or do you want to be one of the people who say... Fuck, I got this first when it turns out to be crap. Oh. Well, I am at least <laughs> going I am at least going to finish the world ends with you. I'm just having Did you to even finish ukulele? No. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. Any hoof. With that being said, this is Mr. Gamer. And this is Kitty the Ball. Signing off.